Do you want to be in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s thinking about how much time you wasted not learning the lesson? Repeating the same pattern, the same behavior, the same toxic cycle over and over and over again? No, because you're smarter than that and I just simply won't allow it. I had to learn these eight things to truly get my life together and start living a life that I actually enjoy living. And I hope by me sharing these lessons, you can do the same too. Lesson number one, you get one life. In case you forgot, you only get one life. Don't waste this one life trying to bend over backwards to people please, your parents, your friends, your spouse, your teachers, your boss, whoever it is. Stop wasting your one life people pleasing. Live the way you want to live and be authentic in who you are. Show up as that person and let that authenticity repel the people who are not for you. Another thing, do not not waste your time waiting for somebody to validate your dreams and tell you that it's okay for you to go out and pursue what you want to go pursue. You have to be the first one to decide this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to do, and you go up and you show out for yourself and you let all the people around you watch your dreams come to life through your consistent self-belief in yourself and you going out there and making it happen. Do what you feel most excited about. And if you don't know what your purpose is yet, if you don't know your mission on earth yet, just follow your highest excitement every single day. Because those little pieces of joy that you find every single day when you decide you wanna take a walk, when you decide you wanna move somewhere, when you decide you might wanna get a different job, those are all the pieces of excitement that are meant to be on your path. And when you follow those, you are led to your greater purpose, your greater mission. But also don't be afraid to make a decision and then it flop afterwards. Like for example, my highest excitement last year was moving to England. Is that my highest excitement now? I I don't know, but people might look at me and think you just moved there. You have to stay for two, three, four years, but I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. Following your highest excitement in the moment, making that decision, following it through, and then following your highest excitement after that, that is all part of life. And people might look at you like you're crazy, but like I said before, you have one life to live and whatever you want to do, you go out in there, you do that. Lesson number two, choose friends who love themselves. Trust me on this, you do not want friends around you who have no standards, no boundaries, and no self-respect. You don't want friends around you who have no sense of identity other than what person they're around. Because someone who doesn't have a sense of identity is going to give you a different version of themselves whenever they're around a different person. I experienced this with people in my life so much that it was honestly draining because when you start showing up as your authentic self, watching other people not live out their authentic self and getting a version of them that you think is them, but then seeing a different version of them with other people makes you very irritated, I'm not gonna lie. It also makes you question the genuinity of that person when they're interacting with you. If this is your best friend, if this is your close group of friends and they're shape-shifting into different people, you're almost left thinking, is this the real them when they're with me? Or are they putting on a facade? Are they shape-shifting to what I like? And are they just going with what I say? Trust me, when you're younger, it might seem like a good idea to have people around you that are just yes men and that seem like they just go with what you want, but it is not the type of people that you want around in your life because when you're trying to be authentic, their inauthenticity is going to make you feel like you have to be a different person. But also choosing friends that are weary of the people they let into their life. Friends who don't have their own standards and their own boundaries will allow any Tom, Dick, or Harry into the picture. And by them allowing any Tom, Dick, or Harry into the picture, you are also associating with these people now because what feeds them feeds you. Their problems become your problems. Their ambition becomes your ambition. Their thoughts become your thoughts. And if their thoughts, their ambition, their drive, their sense of self is all leaning towards the negative side, that is all going to seep into you and your energy. Their problems will drain you. The drama that they constantly bring into your life, whether it be boy problems or other friendship problems, or they're just coming to you with the same issue over and over again, but never taking your advice, that will drain your energy. And now you have no energy left for yourself. Your friends' insecurities will also become your insecurity. And trust me when I say, having friends that are insecure and don't feel good 
good in themselves and who give off this kind of jealous spirit will try in everything in their power to take you down with backhanded compliments, weird side eye, weird shade, random comments here and there because those things will slowly start to chip away at your self-worth. Let's say you came into the picture with self-worth and you found these friends, you are going to be left worse off than when they found you or when you found them. Making sure you have strong standards for the friends you choose will be make or break. It's the same severity of choosing the right romantic partner for your life. Having a good group of friends will be life-changing and I tell you that from experience having friends that are great but then having friends that are not so great I've experienced both sides of the coin no further explanation needed lesson number three learn people learn people's behavior learn about narcissistic tendencies learn about love bombing manipulation gaslighting breadcrumbing learning these things will save your life as a woman I am not even playing with this one it is so important as a woman to learn red flags in men, in friendships, and knowing when somebody is manipulating you, gaslighting you, being, you know, a love bomber, being narcissistic, whatever the case may be, these things are a matter of life and D-E-A-T-H. This one always makes me so frustrated, especially when I watch documentaries about women who get bamboozled by slimy men, slugs is what I like to call them. Like, I just watched a documentary the other day where this woman got hijacked out of $200,000 because she did not discern love bombing right away. She went on a date with this man. After the date, he said, I'm deleting this app. I have found the love of my life. You are my soulmate. And because she was, one, not able to discern that that is love bombing and that is weird and creepy from someone you don't know who does not know you, as flattering as it may sound, that person cannot love you because they don't know you. They love the idea of you, but they don't know you. And two, not having that sense of self like we just talked about, that can be your detriment. So learning discernment. In that moment, if that woman had just known, this is a creep, this is a weirdo, nobody could love you that quickly, I'm never gonna respond again, she would have $200,000 sitting in her bank account right now. But she doesn't because she decided to just go with this man's you know, love bombing. She didn't know she was getting love bombed. So my point is learning this type of stuff, educating yourself on what a red flag is, what is appropriate behavior for specific stages of dating, specific stages of friendships, learning what is not appropriate. Those things will save your life as a woman. I personally have always had amazing discernment with men and with friends. Sometimes not with friends, I digress actually but with men specifically that I have never been in a compromising situation ever. However, that is just my gift. That is just something I've been blessed with. I have seen women all around me countless times be in situations that are very, very dangerous because they cannot discern what is right, what is wrong, what is appropriate, what is inappropriate, what is normal and what is abnormal. So trust me when I say, get to learning the psychology of people, read the books you need to read, get the knowledge, okay? My credentials, just trust me. Lesson number four, be weak. You are allowed to be weak. You're not weak for being these things or doing these things or asking for help. It is just you stepping into that softer side of yourself that, yeah, I can't handle everything on my own. So yeah, I do need help. It is not weak as much as you want to believe or you might have been taught or society pushes on you or us because I'm a woman too, that it is weak to ask for help. And women, you know, if we show that side of ourselves that, oh yeah, they're a woman. It's like, yeah, I am a woman. Like I'm not trying to hide that I'm a woman. Maybe I need help sometimes. I ask for help all the time. If I can't do something, I'm asking somebody. And I don't care what their perception of me is as long as I know who I am. This is why it always comes back to knowing who you are and having a sense of identity. Because if you perceive yourself as weak when you ask for help, it's because you believe that women who ask for help are weak. So you have to flip that, you have to change that. It's not weak to ask for help. It's not weak to get somebody to put your luggage up on the overhead in an aircraft. It's not weak, it's easy. And why do we not allow ourselves to take the easy path? Cry if you need to cry and just 
allow yourself to be a woman, okay? Number five, don't be afraid to be a B-I-T-C-H, a biatch. You have to have firm beliefs in the people you want around you, okay? This kind of goes back to the other one about allowing people into your life and making sure that they have a sense of identity. But this is more so not being afraid to say what's on your mind in a way that will get people to hear you. So don't go out there yelling and being aggressive, but if something is on your mind, communicate that and don't be afraid of that person not taking it well and then walking away. Always say what's on your mind, always express your needs and your wants and don't be afraid to come off in a kind of biatchy way like if you come off as a biatch well that's just how they took it but being firm in your beliefs and what you stand for is always going to be the best thing you can do for yourself rather than staying quiet and suppressing your needs because you fear these people will walk away if you express yourself the people that love you will hear you when you express yourself and your needs and your wants and the people that don't love you won't love you anymore because you're suppressing yourself it won't change the fact that they don't love you so say what you have to say with confidence and conviction and let the rest sort itself out if they walk away they walk away if they don't that's great but that's none of your worry that should not be your problem and your motivation to keep quiet so decide what is important to you decide your beliefs what are non-negotiables for the people in your life and what you will accept and the excuses that you will not accept lesson number six explore yourself this is the greatest gift you can give yourself in this lifetime and if, if you're gonna take one thing away from all of this, let it be this one. Without knowing who you are and knowing the depth of yourself, you will not get anywhere in relationships, in friendships, in your career, in your finances, in whatever area of life you wanna master. When you don't know who you are, you open yourself up for full access for other people to tell you who you are. And you never want somebody else to be more knowledgeable of you than you are of yourself. When you don't know who you are, you let other people define you, you let your mistakes define you, and you let other people's opinions of you define you. You define you. Number seven, appearance matters. Don't shoot the messenger. Appearance has mattered, will always matter. This will not change in your lifetime, my lifetime, or the lifetime after ours. This is just the reality of life. This kind of goes into becoming your own beauty standard, which I've talked about on my channel before right here. Learning how to do makeup that suits you and your features, learning how to do your hair the way that suits you best, learning how to dress for your body type, your figure, your skin tone, all of that will set you up to be extremely successful. People really underestimate the power of your appearance when it comes to getting what you want out of life. This is the game of life right as cheesy as that sounds and you have to put yourself in the running by showing up the best way that you can you have to understand that your appearance speaks before you so it precedes you meaning it speaks before you open your mouth you might tell me vikita i'm so nice i'm so kind i have the biggest brain i'm so intelligent i'm so witty i'm so funny and sarcastic Okay, and I'm gonna tell you, that's all great, but if you are not presenting a very nice package, people are not gonna care what's going on inside. And that's just, like I said, don't shoot the messenger. That's just the fact of the matter. They're interacting with this before they're interacting with your soul. And so in order for you to showcase yourself in the best way possible and to get people to interact with that wit and that sarcasm and that laughter and that funniness that you have going on and that intellect you have to give them a reason why to even give you a chance in this video the becoming your own beauty standard i basically explain that people are not going to give you the time of day if they don't view you as someone who gives yourself the time of day if you're showing up in the world looking like someone who takes two minutes to get ready like you literally just open your eyes brush your teeth maybe some people don't even brush their teeth these days i don't know what's going on with that but you just quickly run out the door and then you go on with your day that is saying that you don't care about yourself you don't respect yourself you don't have time for yourself so if you don't even give yourself that respect of putting a little effort into the way you look and showing up in the world why are people going to give you the time of day they're not going to respect you they're not they're going to look at you and be like okay like she doesn't even take care of herself like she doesn't have enough respect for herself to even like put herself together. Why would I respect somebody like that? I operate that way too. If people are walking in and they don't look good and it's like, 
you're making me believe that you know you're kind of disrespecting the people that you're around when you show up looking a little sideways i'm just trying to you know hammer this point home that your appearance matters you need to start taking care of it you need to learn how to do your makeup you need to learn all the things that will present you in the best light so that all the good stuff inside can actually be heard and listened to and the best thing about this is that you're positioning yourself as the entire package so many women are rebelling against the fact that they're more than their appearance great that's all fine and dandy but have you ever thought that if you take care of yourself on the outside and then you present this beautiful inside people are going to be like oh my god this is the full package she's literally stunning she's beautiful but she's also all those things on the inside you don't have to be one or the other ugly on the outside beautiful on the inside or beautiful on the outside and ugly on the inside you can have it all you can be both and you're allowed to be both so grant yourself that permission to say hey it's not vain of me to take care of myself lesson number eight get out of your comfort zone this one is a non-negotiable if you actually want a life that you actually love like if you're trying to manifest your dream life you have to get out of your comfort zone you have got to let those fears that are tricking you into believing you love being boring and you love your average life you know that guy is not that bad the friends aren't that bad the job the boss he's not that bad but it's just fear tricking you into believing that it's not that bad get out of your comfort zone shut down the fears allow yourself to take a risk jump into the deep end and just go for it because i can guarantee you taking that jump will change your entire life learning how to be okay with change framing change from negative to positive will in fact change your life this is coming from somebody who absolutely hated despised change the thought of it would give me anxiety this was just a couple years ago thinking about people changing or uh, me changing or my environment changing or my routine changing scared the heck out of me and i tried so long to keep it the same until last year 2023 when my entire life changed the moment i decided i'm packing up my dinky little apartment i'm going to the states for a month and a half to live with my aunt and uncle and things are just going to work itself out my youtube channel took off i started making a full-time income on youtube and on social media i ended up in three months so this time no yeah this time last year i was plotting all of this but in december i bought my plane ticket to move to england and i've been here ever since so if i can do it you can do it too start small dip your toes in have a little change here and there step out of your comfort zone here and there challenge yourself this is where you are going to find who you are, what you want to do, your purpose. You're going to find your joy and your passion and the things that set you on fire. But you have to take the leap and take the risk for yourself. My new mantra is like challenging myself every single day or whenever to give myself new reasons to be proud of myself. I highly encourage you do the same. Give yourself new reasons every day to be proud of yourself by taking risks and doing the things that scare you. If you wanna learn how to become your own beauty standard so you can start you know, getting it together on the outside, watch this video next.